OK, so we've established that we can find the rate of change of something at a point, or to be precise, take the limit towards a point. How does that help us solve problems? Well, in this case, we know that the acceleration of our falling object is equal to minus mg, so sorry, sorry g downwards. M's cancel out when you, because you had F equals MA, plus the drag force upwards divided by the mass, so that's half C rho A divided by the mass V squared. And that's the equation we've solved numerically before. So what we're going to do now is turn this into a differential equation, an equation that includes derivatives. In this case, we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So that's written in this form as dv by dt equals minus g plus c rho a over 2m v squared. Now that is a differential equation. And so if we can solve that, we have an accurate answer, no numerical approximations, a nice numerical answer to our whole issue. Can we solve it? Well, this is actually a fairly straightforward one to solve, but the maths of solving differential equations you won't get to till the second year differential equations course in mathematics. So what we're going to do here is cheat. The easiest way to cheat on this one is to plug it into Wolfram Alpha or Mathematica and solve it. The other way to do it would be to look up a table of integrals. Now, if we're going to put it into something like Wolfram Alpha, we need to do a bit of changing the symbols. First of all, we're going to write, instead of dv by dt, we're going to write it as v prime square brackets t. The prime means it's a derivative, two primes have been the second derivative, and the square brackets t means as a function of t. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to lump all these different constants together. So we call that um, minus g plus, I'm going to call all that stuff a v t squared. Now that's just rewriting the equation here. We've just got to set a equals c rho big A over 2m. It's just that when you look up a table of integrals or type something into Wolfram Alpha, it probably won't have all exact things over here. But that's just a constant. Everything in there is constant. So you can just multiply them all together and call it a constant. And you're more likely to find it in a table of integrals if it's just a constant there. Likewise here, you can call that b if you like, or minus g. OK, so that's the form we need to plug it into Wolfram Alpha. So let's bring Wolfram Alpha up. So what we've got is that v prime t equals minus g plus a v t squared. OK, let's see if we can solve that for us. It sure can. So it tells us it's a separable equation. You can learn more about what that means in maths. It turns out this is actually a well-known equation. It's got a name, a Riccati's equation. I don't know who Riccati was, but he must have been a smart mathematician. So this means it's a sort of equation you will find in tables of differential equations. It's a first order nonlinear ordinary differential equation. It can be written in different forms. And most importantly of all, down here is the solution. So root g, tan, and there's a constant. Now, this is a first order differential equation because it's got a first derivative, in this case, dv by dt, v prime. If you go to any first order differential equation, you're going to get one constant in here because you had to do one integral to get the solution. If it was a second order differential equation, we'll see them later, you're going to get two constants. In this case, you've got one constant here. So that is a solution. If you bring up Mathematica, you can do something similar. Mathematica is the actual engine that drives all from alpha, so it's going to look very similar. So once again, you've the same equation. A couple of tricky things. You need to put D solve, capital D, capital S, and square brackets around it. That tells, it, tells you it's a differential equation that you want to solve. If you call it T as your variable here, it turns out it won't work as Mathematica uses T for something else. I've renamed it as X. 
again, just a change of name, nothing bigger. I called it minus A rather than minus G, no big deal. The most important tricky thing is you need to put double equal signs here. Um, in Mathematica, a single equal sign means an assignment, it doesn't actually mean real equality. So double equal signs, so you put any differential equation, comma, what you're trying to solve for, v of x, comma, what the variable is x. And to run this, you press shift return or shift enter, and it comes up with the same answer that we've seen before. So let's look at the solution. It's got a tan with an H on the end. That's actually a, what's called a hyperbolic tangent. You can look that up on Wikipedia or wherever you like. It turns out that tan H, that's a hyperbolic tan of X, equals e to the x minus e to the minus x all over e to the x plus e to the minus x. You may or may not have encountered that before, but it doesn't matter. You can look it up easily enough. How does that behave? Well, we can once again ask Wolfram Alpha to do that for us. We can type a plot hyperbolic tan of t, and we see it looks something like this. So it starts off some negative value, comes up, and comes up like that, with a value of 0 at 0. So that's what tan, hyperbolic tan, looks like, something like this. OK, so our first step is to work out what this constant C here is. Now, normally the way you work out constants in these solutions is by looking at the boundary conditions, which might mean the starting point or the end point, or some point where you know the velocity and time. In this case, we know the velocity at time 0 equals 0. So we need this to equal 0 when t equals 0. What does that tell us? Well, we know that the hyperbolic tan of something is 0 when the something inside is 0, from we see that from the plot there. So that means when t equals 0, that must equal 0, which means that root ag c1 must equal 0. So that tells us that c1 equals 0, and that gives our solution. If we decided arbitrarily that we were going to start when time equals 10 seconds, that would give us a different value of c1. So that's telling us that our velocity is actually hyperbolic tangent root a g times t over root a. And if you remember that little a is given by this here. Does this actually work? Well, here's a plot. The green line is that hyperbolic tangent curve, and the red crosses are our numerical solutions for a time step of 0.1 seconds. And you can see they agree extraordinarily well. If you remember, our 0.1 second wasn't quite accurate, it was about 1% off. And you can see that indeed the red crosses down here are slightly to the left of the green line. If I went to having a smaller time step, they'd be so close to each other you just couldn't see them. But they still end up at pretty much the same terminal velocity. And that's telling us that both our methods here, the numerical and the calculus approach, have come up with pretty much exactly the same answer.